One of the other things I think a lot of folks have noticed at any conference you go to is some of the most interesting information that you learn. You learn not in the sessions necessarily, but from the hallway conversations that happen in between the sessions. Uh, at the last podcast, which was Podcamp Pittsburgh 2, we had uh, a conversation that erupted around the check-in table that involved five people. Uh, I think two of them were volunteers who were working the table and two or three others were just passers-by who got into a conversation about spam email and what makes spam email spam specifically. And through some turns of phrase, this group of five people concocted a word, bacon, B-A-C-N, because it's a web 2.0 word and you can't use all the vowels. And uh, we're for, with uh, the group who's uh, defined bacon. And bacon is a serious problem with our inboxes these days. Yeah, basic, basically what bacon is, is it's um, notifications you want that you just don't have time to read. So anything you get where somebody is now following you on Twitter, somebody has added you on a, as a friend on Facebook, that's information that's important to you. You want to know who's following you, you want to know who's your friend. But you don't necessarily have time to read that information right away. And this was just, a, it was a joke. It was coined by uh, two Canadians and some Americans. Again, we're, we're big on the Canadians. And it went from a small hallway conversation to an inside joke to a session the next day at PodCamp. They decided they were going to take it seriously enough to explain bacon to the world as a mock session. Somebody videotaped that session and put that session online and somebody else blogged about it. Within 72 hours of PodCamp Pittsburgh 2, we had people uh, blogging about the term bacon on uh, Web Worker Daily, uh, in, in Japanese, in Russian. The word somehow caught on faster than it ever had a right to. And all of a sudden, people were debating its merit as its real word. People were setting up bacon folders in their Gmail. We eventually saw that uh, Google released an official blog post on how to create a bacon folder. So the power of PodCamp is to apparently create words that end up in the popular lexicon to the point that Time Magazine listed bacon as one of its influential buzzwords at the end of 2007. So we'd like to thank the Canadians and the Americans who are surrounding the check-in table at PodCamp Pittsburgh 2 for creating a word that will now last generations. If you want more information on bacon or you want to help the fight against bacon, you can find out more information after August 20th, 2007 at bacon2.com, B-A-C-N 2.com, or you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash B-A-C-N.